GM everybody, this is another quick video where I try to explain a topic in Polkadot to make it easier for you to understand. And in this case, we're going to talk about bounties and more specifically uh, issuing child bounties uh, when you're a curator. The account setup that I will use uh, looks like this because I'm using uh, like an actual live chain, not a testnet, right? So we have a peer proxy. This peer proxy is the bounty curator on chain uh, as decided by uh, OpenGov. That peer proxy is controlled by a multisig, which is the any proxy for that peer proxy. It means this multisig can command this peer proxy to carry out any transaction. And that multisig is ultimately controlled by the signers of the multisig. Now, if that didn't make any sense, you should uh, watch this video, uh, the one that was previous to this one. Um, it will explain how to make a pure proxy and a uh, multisig and then link the two together and the reasons why you might want to do that. So I will uh, timestamp uh, this video. So we're gonna have the quick overview, then we're gonna uh, go through the process of adding a child bounty. Then we're going to go through uh, making a batch call to propose the curator, accept the curator, and award the child bounty, which is basically what uh, bounties mostly do. And then we're going to go through some closing thoughts, if I have any. So this is kind of the standard method that people use uh, when operating bounties. So first of all, you add a child bounty. Now this gives you a global child bounty number, right? Why is this important? If you did all of the actions here in a single batch call, so you issued an extrinsic where it does all of the things together, um, it has a chance of failing. And why is that? It's because there is not only your bounty in the system, there's a, a bunch of other bounties. So if your uh, multisig takes a long time to sign off uh, on the multisig transaction, another bounty could issue an add child bounty call, which will give them a uh, the global number that you refer to in these other calls. And we'll go through all of that uh, in, in the example. But yeah, you should do uh, add child bounty as a single call. You should wait for that to be signed off. You get allocated a global child bounty number. Then you can do a batch call with proposed curator. In most cases, uh, this will be the actual curation team itself. Accept that curator. And then you award the child bounty to the account of whoever you want to pay out for whichever service they've been doing. Once that's all done, this like eight day payout period begins. There is uh, another alternative method uh, that I see some people use. Um, this is mainly uh, if you're using like sub curators, for example. So the main curation team adds a child bounty. You then get the child bounty number. You can then do a batch call to propose the curator and accept the curator. This might be uh, one of your sub curators, like I said. And then uh, that curator, because you proposed and accepted them, can then award the child bounty uh, to whoever uh, is getting the money, right? And with that out of the way, let's go through how to actually do this on chain. Let me just check that you can see that screen. You can. Okay. So in this setup, it's the same uh, account setup that I described earlier. I have my Limo account. This Limo account is a member of this RPC Bounty Multisig, as you can see, it's one of the signatories. And this RPC Bounty Multisig controls this RPC Bounty Pure Proxy. As you can see here, the proxy count is the RPC Bounty Multisig, as in any proxy. And we can also verify that by going to Governance, Bounties, and then to our bounty number, which is number 25. And you can see RPC Bounty uh, Pure Proxy. Now, I'm on Kusama. This is the exact same process on Polkadot as well. So as I said, we want to issue, uh, oh sorry, we want to add some child bounties uh, in order to generate the, uh, the child bounty number. So you can go to uh, Developer, then Extrinsics, select uh, the curator. In this case, remember it is the pure proxy, which is the curator on chain. And then what you want to do is you want to go to utility, uh, utility, and then you want to go to force batch. Now, the reason for this is it just works, right? It makes sure everything works properly. Um, I don't know the technical reason why, but we never have any problems using force batch. And this uh, lets you add multiple extrinsics in one uh, call, let's say. Now I want to add uh, five child bounties this time. So I'm gonna press this add item. So we currently have one, so two, three, four, five. 
So now we can make five uh, separate extrinsics within this utility batch call. And all of them are going to be child bounties, add bounty, add child bounty. So let's just fill all these out now with child bounty, Ooh, child bounty, add bounty, child bounties, add bounty, child bounties, add bounty. Right, so we've got all them sorted. Now our uh, parent ID, as we went through earlier, which you can find on governance then bounties, was number 25. So let's fill all these out with uh, 25 while we're here. 25. Okay, now what we wanna do is we want to set the value of each of these child bounties. Now, one thing to note is you can see here, at the right hand side, it says KSM. And this is the same on dot. If it says dot there as well, that means that it's whole units of those tokens. So if we write one, it's one KSM or one dot. If you do not see this little, uh, you know, the, the token ticker, it means that it's like decimals and it becomes a bit more uh, difficult to figure out. But luckily for child bounties, it's uh, whole units. So now we need to add all of these child bounties and uh, luckily I have them on another screen. Uh, so the first one is this much and it is for Dweller and it's for August, Ooh, August 24. And the second one is for this much and it is for on finality, August 24. Again, what we're doing here is we are referring to the parent bounty, we are setting the value of, ch of the child bounty, and then we're giving a description so we know which, uh, you know, which company or which person this child bounty should be uh, awarded for. But obviously you could uh, not have somebody in mind and you could say for X service, right? Um, I'm sure you might understand what I'm, uh, what I'm getting at. So let me fill all of these out very quickly. We've got this, this is for Lucky Friday, August 24. Then this one is for 66.7, and it is for Rock X, X, August 24. And the last one is for 163.06. And this one is for radium block August 24. So again, we've now, uh, when this is uh, approved by the other multi-sig uh, signatories, it will uh, create this transaction and, and post it on chain and it will add uh, five child bounties, right? So, and then after that, we will receive the uh, child bounty numbers, these global child bounty numbers, and then we can go on to the next uh, stages. So to finish this section off, uh, we press sign and submit, or submit transaction, sorry. And then we select the uh, proxy account and my sign the signatory is me. And we wanna share this multi-sig call data and call hash uh, with the other signatories. And now we're gonna fast forward in time to when my multi-sig uh, signatories have signed that and we'll go through the next steps. Okay, so it is now a few hours later and the other signatories signed uh, that multi-sig call to add those child bounties. So let's go through the next steps. So we want to go to uh, governance and then bounties and then go to your uh, bounty. In my case, it's bounty 25. Press the downwards arrow and then press these like two squares to get uh, to subsquare. And then here, you can see the list of child bounties. So let's press view all. You can see a list of all of uh, your bounties, child bounties here. Uh, in my case, it is everything from August. So we've got bounty or child bounty number 1303, 1304, 5, 6, and 7. Again, if we did everything in one batch call, so that would be the add child bounty, propose curator, accept curator, and award child bounty, there's a risk it might fail because this number is a global number. Um, that you need to refer to this number in the next step, as you will see very soon. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, issue uh, the free extrinsics for just one child bounty, and then we're gonna skip forward a bit so you don't have to see me manually type in uh, multiple uh, things. So again, 
developer extrinsics and then select your peer proxy up here and then you want to do a utility and then force batch and then for each child bounty you need to issue free extrinsics so that is a child bounties uh, proposed curator a child bounties accept curator and a child bounties award uh, child bounty so i'm going to show you how we do it for uh, like one of them and then we're going to skip forward a little bit to one that i prepared earlier so again for just the one child bounty let's do three calls so there's going to be a child bounty prepare a uh, proposed curator then a child bounties accept curator then a child bounties uh, award child bounty. So the first uh, one that I have is uh, bounty 25, but it is child bounty 1303. And here under the proposed curator call, we want to set ourselves, our uh, peer proxy as the uh, curator. Then we want to accept the curator. So it's uh, parent bounty 25 and child bounty 1303. Now, th this is where you can see if you did everything in one call, because you have to refer to the global child bounty number here. If uh, when you signed the call with everything in it, if the number was wrong, everything would fail, which is why you do it in two uh, transactions as a minimum. Then in this case, uh, for child bounty 1303, uh, this is awarded to Dweller. So let's paste in their address here. And one bug you might see in Poker.js is you see I pasted that in and it changed this uh, account up here as well. So you wanna always double check um, that all the addresses are correct. Now, if you wanted to do this for multiple uh, child bounties, you would then add another free and you'd you know, add uh, a child bounty call to propose the curator, another one to uh, accept and then the one to award, right? Uh, the fact that I'm doing so many, I'm just gonna skip forward and show you how that looks at the end. So this is uh, one I prepared earlier. So again, let's just go through it. So we are using the RPC bounty peer proxy up here. So utility force batch. So then we've got the first one, child bounties proposed curator. It's my parent bounty of 25, child bounty 1303. And it is the peer proxy that is gonna be the curator. Then we accept this curator, 251303. Then we award the child bounty uh, from parent bounty 25, child bounty 1303 to dweller. And it's exactly the same for every single one in this batch. So again, propose uh, and set yourself as the, the curator, then accept with the correct number, then award it to whoever you want to award it to. And I'm just gonna double check now, but you can see it's exactly the same uh, for every um, batch of three different uh, transactions, right? We'll double check this one. Yeah, that is the correct address. Then the last one is, again, proposed curator, parent bounty, child bounty, your peer proxy, accept curator, parent bounty, child bounty, and then award bounty, parent bounty, child bounty, and then whoever you wanna give the money to. So this is correct now. So then we submit the transaction. You wanna share this multi-sig call data and the call hash with your um, other signatories. So I'm gonna do that off screen uh, really quickly. So we've got Kusama, propose, slash accept, curator and award child bounties. Then we've got multi-sig call data. Let's paste that in. Then we've got the call hash down here, call hash. Let's just make sure the formatting's good so that everybody can easily understand what we're talking about. Send that and then let's sign and submit uh, this transaction. Okay, so now that is uh, posted to the chain. And again, from the multi-sig, you can see some pending uh, transaction and then people can sign this. Now, um, we will skip forward into the future again so that when this is signed, I will show you how it looks on Subsquare because currently uh, it is added because we've only uh, approved the add child bounty uh, call. 
uh, when this next uh, call that we just made, this multi-sig transaction is signed by the other signatories, it will become a pending payout, which then after uh, like eight days, uh, whoever you awarded the child bounty to can um, claim the funds. Okay, so my other curators have signed those transactions. It's been a few days over the weekend, uh, but now we're ready to look at this again. So we can see that for each of the child bounties we added previously, the status has changed to pending payout. So let's click on one of these uh, transactions, or child bounties, sorry. So now you can see, again, it says pending payout, and it's claimable in three days and 20 hours. So on Kusama, the child bounty uh, payout uh, time, let's say, is four days total, whereas on Polkadot, it's eight days. Once this timer expires, uh, whoever you award the child bounty to, if they log into uh, Subsquare using that account, they can press claim, sign the transaction to get the tokens. Uh, if uh, for some reason they don't want to use Subsquare, uh, they can use Extrinsics uh, on whichever relay chain, and I believe the call is something like child bounties claim child bounty. You need to refer to the parent bounty number. Uh, in my case, that is 25 but depending on which uh, bounty you're operating it'll be different and then the child bounty number in this case 1307 they sign that transaction they get the tokens so the last thing we're going to talk about is just the life cycle once again so you add a child bounty when that's signed off you get awarded uh, the child bounty number and the status changes to added so on subsquare you'll see it says added then what you need to do is you can either do this in a batch or do these separately. We spoke about that at the very beginning. You need to uh, propose and accept the curator and award the child bounty. Once that is all signed off, the status of the child bounty changes to pending payout, and you'll see that reflected on Subsquare. That begins the eight-day payout period on Polkadot, or four days on uh, Kusama, and you'll see that on Subsquare, it'll give you the nice little countdown. Once that time uh, expires, then the child bounty becomes claimable, and like I said before, they can either press claim on Subsquare, or use uh, Extrinsics if they're using like a multi-sig or something. So that's everything. Um, let me know in the comments, or write to me on Twitter, or Telegram, whatever. Uh, if you have any questions, always free to help out with anything. Uh, thank you very much, and bye-bye.